Stepdad thinks video games are rotting my brain. The past couple of days, my stepdad has been telling me that video games are rotting your brain for things like not going to get juice from the shop without him even asking in the first place. I told him that they aren't and that most of the things he finds online aren't at all true, like how they cause depression or anxiety and brain damage. I don't have any of those, thankfully. I do tend to spend pretty much every day on games because it's half term and there isn't much to do anyway. Is there something I can tell my parents that will convince them that video games don't cause me brain damage? Because they don't and that they shouldn't believe everything they see online? Listen, I totally get that a lot of parents and elderly people see video games as a bad thing on the whole and, you know, they see their kids as wasting their lives away playing video games when they should be at school or running outside like they used to do back in their day. But times have changed and, to be completely honest, I think that parents need to understand that there are loads of positives about video games these days. First of all, we've all been locked inside for the past year without video games and being able to go online and chat with my mates and just play games and take away the boredom of being inside all day. I genuinely am not sure what I would have done like in many ways they've been an absolute lifesaver for a lot of us for me personally over the last year especially just the ability to actually still socialize without seeing someone face to face has been amazing obviously like i'd rather go and see someone in person but being able to just jump on my computer and just chat with my mates playing a game is just an amazing relief because otherwise i'd be on my own all day it'd be terrible I'm not saying that you have to play video games with your friends or anything, but that is definitely one of the positives that you could say to your parents OP. Look, I'm playing with my mates, having a great time. Just because you can't physically see them, they're not physically here, doesn't mean I'm not interacting with them. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. Now, speaking of video games, I'm very happy to say that today's video is actually sponsored by one. I know, mental, almost as if I planned this. Anyway, thanks to Dragon City for sponsoring today's video. Dragon City is a fantastic free-to-play app on Android, iOS, and also Windows and Amazon. If you couldn't tell by the name, it's all about dragons. There are literally hundreds to collect, including many of your favorite YouTubers. You've got Mr. Beast, Dream, Laserbeam, even me, even Redditor is in the game. It's just a fantastic experience. Wait, so you're telling me I'm not in the game? I was told I was... I'm not, do I'm not doing this. You can also breed dragons to create completely new original ones. All you've got to do is click the link in the description to get started. So what do you actually do with your dragons, I hear you ask? Well, you take them to battle, of course. Feed them, train them, and then let them scrap. There are loads of different PvP modes, and you can fight in real time against your mates. Plus, there are events every week to discover and play new adventures. So download the game right now using the link below, and you'll get a cheeky reward. Not only a legendary Blaze Frost dragon, but also a large chest of food with up to a million bits of food in it. Now, I've been told this food is actually in-game, not real life, which is a bit of a shame, but still, a million bits of food is a million bits of food. Oh, and you've also got to have the latest version of the game or you won't get that reward. So go and download it now. Have you got it yet? Yes? Good. All right, let's get on with the rest of the video. Entitled mother refuses to look after me when I have a kidney infection. This happened a year ago and my entitled mum thinks she did nothing wrong still. I'm 18 years old now and this happened when I was 16 and still living with my entitled mum. I woke up one morning in extreme pain coming from my bladder when I went to the bathroom with huge blood clots leaving my body. My entitled mum took me to the doctors right away and they had to take a sample of my urine. I should also mention that I was struggling to walk as the pain was that bad. Anyway, after looking at the sample and doing some tests, I was diagnosed with a kidney infection. But luckily, I didn't need to go to A&E. I was taken home and I had to miss college. My boyfriend and I were only dating for a week at that point. We're still together now, in fact. But I called him and told him what had happened, so he couldn't see me that day. Now, he said he would come over as soon as he finished all his classes for the day to come and look after me. Well, throughout the whole day, my mother refused to feed me, give me pain meds, or even see me, despite the fact I'd started to develop a fever and started to become very sick. By the time my boyfriend came around, he checked my temperature and said I was too hot to touch and opened all the windows in my room and found a fan to try and cool me down. After this whole thing, I was finally able to sleep and he kept an eye on me as he let me sleep on his chest. When I woke up, he had some pain meds for me to take and told me my entitled mum wouldn't tell him where they were, so he'd had to ask my younger brother who had no idea I was even sick. He thought I was still at college, bless him. So they raided the kitchen until they found some. Why is your entitled mum not telling your boyfriend where the pain meds are? What the heck? 
Seconds later, my entitled mum offered my boyfriend food and my stomach growled, but she chose to ignore that. My boyfriend heard it though and said he wanted a cheese toasty but would like it cut in half. She did just that and he gave me the other half while she just glared at him. He stayed till 10 o'clock to make sure I was all right and had his parents come pick him up. After he left, she banned him from coming over and I asked why. I was given no reason by my mum. I told him the next day and guess what? He turned up in his rugby uniform and stayed for another two hours before leaving for his rugby. To say my mum was fuming was an understatement. He laughed the next day when I was able to return to college and tell him what happened. The thing is, my entitled mum has never fed me when I'm sick or have an infection. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. However, she'll always make sure my younger brother is fed and well medicated whenever he's sick. So I think he's just favoured more than me. I should mention my brother isn't entitled, but is actually one of the sweetest people I know and is famous for his hugs in his primary school. Now, about a month later, I moved out of my entitled mum's home into my awesome dad and stepmums, and I've been living there ever since. My boyfriend, dad, and stepmum all get along great, so I'm happy for that. I mean, yeah, let, let's not sugarcoat that. Not feeding your kid or giving them pain medication when they're sick is child abuse. I'm not really sure what more I can say um, than that. Am I wrong? Am I going too overboard there? I don't think I am. Like literally, you, you've been told probably, I assume, by the hospital how to treat the kidney infection, what to do as a mother to, to help your ailing child, but then you choose not to feed them or, or give them any medication that's probably been provided to you. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? Sorry? OP, obviously, well done for leaving that house as soon as you could. And I know a lot of you sometimes comment below, why do you always say, Jack, um, just leave the house when you can? It's not always possible. But when it is possible, that's the main point. I don't, I don't, I know for like a lot of people, you can't just leave the house or leave your family. I'm not, I'm not ever saying that. I'm just saying if it is possible and you genuinely want to do it and you're in a situation like this, like OP did, just do it and see how it is. Well done. And now moving on to our third and final story of today's episode. Mum forces me to give my sister my car. A little backstory. I'm currently 29 years old and happily married. My wife's job has afforded me the ability to have good healthcare, including counseling for mental issues. We've been planning on having kids soon. And a few years ago, I thought it would be a good idea to sort myself out. I've been doing really well with it and organizing a lot of my past. I always thought things weren't that bad for me and I had a good family and a good life. But while sorting through the memories, my therapist and I have definitely identified trauma caused mostly by my mother. To put it simply, my younger sister is her favorite. I'm not sure if it's because she never wanted a boy or because she sees all men as evil. It's a little ironic because I grew up without religion and her dad had always said I would go to hell because I'm not baptized. But she sees my gender as an original sin of sorts. That is kind of effed up. Yes, it is. What? So about six years ago, I just graduated college and had had my car repossessed since I was out of a job. My grandmother, my mum's mum, had given me $2,000 to buy myself a car, partly as a graduation gift and partly because I really needed the help. Since my wife was still in school and hadn't actually started working yet, she's a military officer, I was trying to pay my own bills with no steady work and a degree that was useless. My dad, who has had a really rough time of it, causing a lot of my family's financial hardships, put his godlike skills at buying and selling cars into helping me find a decent junker I could use. Since he didn't work, he spent a lot of time with me, teaching me a lot of his trade so I could research cars, negotiate, and come away paying a good price for something that steers and stops. I ended up buying a 1998 Honda Accord for about 800 bucks, a great deal from the 1200 asking price. Yes, it had a broken windshield and the radio was missing, not to mention the door handle was broken on the driver's side, so it was difficult to open. But it turned out to be a great car. The engine and transmission was solid, and I invested the rest of my grandma's $2,000 into fixing the windshield, buying a new stereo, and buying a new handle. After a week of tinkering, I was super proud of this little trooper of a car. For what it was, I loved it. Fast forward a year or so, and I got married. My wife had bought a car for herself after graduation, and we were going to be stationed out east while she went for a master's degree. I was excited to get out of my hometown, and now I realize I was more excited to just get away from my mother. My mum was going to miss me, but she was excited for me. 
until I told her that I was planning to bring my car out east with me. My sister still lived with my parents at the time and had no car, but she did have a job and often got rides from me, my parents, or her friends. My mum and dad shared a vehicle, but my dad didn't work, so their transportation situation wasn't the worst. My mum didn't share the sentiment though and started in on the hints that they could use my car. The city we were moving to would make two cars redundant and inconvenient. My car wouldn't make it out there anyway. All her standard manipulative moves to convince me what she wanted was the right thing and that my sister needed a car for work. For a while, I've pondered if this was a am I the butthole kind of story. But just wait until the end. One day, during one of the shuffles, where I had to pick up my mum and sister at the same time because my dad was running errands, they cornered me in their driveway. Your sister needs your car and you have no use for it. I get that, but it is my car. I could use the money from selling it. My sister replied, But I can't get to work without a car, and without you helping us, I'll get fired. Okay, why not buy my car? I'll sell it to you for what I bought it for. It's worth way more now anyway. Oh, that's not fair on us. We don't have that kind of money to spend. We need your help. It went on like this, each of them getting more frantic and not listening to my logic. I tried to defend myself and brought up how I'd been able to buy a car when I was 16 using my own money. I pointed out that if my sister saved rather than spent her money, $800 wouldn't be that hard to come up with. They both got offended at the mere suggestion and both of them started to cry. Again, I wasn't very experienced with manipulation at the time, so it didn't come across as obvious that they were trying to appeal to my emotions to sway me. After about an hour long arguments and them screaming at me, I relented. I told them my sister could have the car and I gave her the title the next day. As the years passed, I figured, what the heck? It's my sister and I love her, so why not help them out? It's not like I really needed the money anyway, since my wife makes more than enough money. I even helped my sister with some repairs when I came to visit. I changed out the trashy aftermarket wheels with steel ones from the junkyard. I fixed the AC blower motor, changed her CV axles. That car was a good little trooper, and it stayed in the family, so whatever. That is, until about a year ago. She called me one day and told me she'd sold it for two thousand dollars and turned around to buy herself a new car i told her good job and that she flipped it for a great profit but i couldn't help but feel mad about it after a while processing the feelings i realized just why i was angry she'd taken the charity i'd given her the hard work i'd put in to keep it driving and fix it up and she'd sold it making a 100 profit on it and using that money for herself i never got a dime It's like I threw that $2,000 from my grandmother away, like I took it and set fire to it six years ago. Only now do I realize that this has been going on for years with my mum and sister. So many effed up memories from my childhood, all of which revolved around me having something and it being taken away because my mum didn't know how to properly communicate or just wanted to make it fair for my sister, who always lived the easy life. And yet she's the one who has self-diagnosed depression and anxiety. Look, I love them both, but it certainly makes it easier now that I don't live near them. Ah, uh, yeah, that just doesn't sit right with me. I mean, the whole time I was thinking, you know what? It's all right. If your sister needs a car and you don't really need one, then look, fair enough. I completely understand why she'd want the car and your mum would want you to give her the car. Still, I was a little bit like, come on, it is your car. You paid for it. You know, you own it. You can choose to do what you want, despite what your mum or sister might want. But that bit at the end where your sister sold it for profit and you've got nothing from it, that is just disgusting. That's like taking something from a charity shop and then selling it on for profit. That's how I see it anyway. Like, imagine your sibling gives you something, you know, for free, and then you sell it on for profit. What a horrible thing to do. That's the worst part of this whole story. And it just proves pretty much that, yeah, they were being conniving the whole time, manipulating you emotionally into getting the car. Just sell it on, man. Nah, horrible stuff. I mean, you put, like, hard hours and, and work, let alone the money, into this car to make it great for your sister. And she's gone and done that with her mum backing her up. Not for me. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this one. Really hope you enjoyed it. Again, a massive thank you to Dragon City for sponsoring this video. Guys, trust me, the app is really good fun. I play it with my mates and I have been over the past week or so. Just trying it out. Please do go and click the link in the description and the pinned comments. It really helps me and the channel out. And you know what? You're getting a great game as well. Trust me, you're going to enjoy it. With that all being said, thanks for watching. And I will see you all tomorrow with a brand new video.